anyway, well, welcome to Making Waves. This is episode 89, and uh, tonight we're joined by uh, Breaking Benjamin's Keith Whalen. Keith, thank you for joining us, man. I really appreciate your time. I appreciate it, man. Thanks for having me. Yeah, now you're out at, uh, right now. You're at, you're in London. You've got a tour going on now uh, with the band Red, and you're going to be doing the uh, EU in the UK, and you just had your first gig tonight in London. Um, so just so people understand if there's any kind of glitches here in our Q and a that they'll understand yep. that, uh, the satellites aren't always working, uh, at this distance, but you're out on the road and I, I assume just, I know you toured during the summer and then you went out and you guys did just did a fantastic tour with Allison change and Bush. Um, but now you're back on the road uh, doing your, your solo act here and you're still, uh, doing a, is this still in support of uh, this world or the next? It is. Yes, mm -hmm. sir. Yeah, that uh, the album's about a little over a year old. Mm -hmm. um, you know, obviously there was a little bit of a, a, a delay of getting out and playing shows with COVID and everything. But, you know, this this year has been just really firing on all cylinders. And, uh, you know, between the solo stuff and Breaking Band, it's been such a busy year and uh, really just making up for lost time. And um, uh, it's been amazing. It's been amazing to be back out and to just you know, feel the energy of everyone and, and really have a career again, you know? Um, but, but no, go ahead. What are you gonna say? No, I was going to say, you mentioned, I so say just all cylinders firing. You are the epitome of what I consider a working musician. I mean, you don't, <laughs> there's not much breathing time. You, I mean, seriously, your turnaround was less than a week from your one tour to this one. And uh, it's, 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 it's always amazing and fascinating. And it reminds me of that kind of yeoman's work ethic of the bands we grew up or loved from the 70s. Tour, album, tour, album, all in the same. Sometimes Kiss was putting out two albums per year for crying out loud. <laughs> it's just, it's fascinating to see that work ethic. And I, I'm just, you know, it's, it's an amazing, it's an amazing feat you're doing it. And I, and I understand sometimes people feel like they're making it for the last time, but I, I just kind of feel it's also something that's probably within you just to keep plowing, plowing ahead. Well, I appreciate it. Yeah, I uh, I get a little antsy uh, if I'm home for too long, and you know we were we were home for a while there, so it was I think everybody was ready to get out of the basement and uh, you know get back into the real world. But um, yeah, I, uh, I the way I look at it, I you know one day I, I'm going to be um, too old to be able to play guitar and be able to tour, and you know I won't be able to sing or anything. So. I'm just hitting it while it's hot and everything's working. So uh, I just want to get out there. You know, at a certain age, you're going to just transition over to blues where you can <laughs> grow old and your voice can be a little haggard. And, and that's what then it's accepted in that. So this is the perfect segue for you. There we go. <laughs> gonna, yeah. Here's my off ramp blues. <laughs> hey, that doesn't sound too bad. I'll do some, some raspy stuff. There you go. So, um, <laughs> With the new record, you've also you've been doing a lot of collaborations this year. You've got two recently out. You've got the one you just uh, with uh, with Sahaj for Raw and with uh, with Jason Hook involved um, with it Incomplete, yeah. and yep. you've got one coming out that's super interesting that with We Are Pigs. Yeah, um, how did that one come on? Because that seems like a a little bit different fare for you. It is. Uh, you know, I've I've known SJ a, a few years now. And, uh, you know, we, we, we met on tour. She was, uh, she had worked with Jason on, on some projects and, mm -hmm. and she came out in medicine, Arizona. It was my first time meeting her. We just kind of hit it off. I was like, man, you're so talented. And so just great and cool, uh, you know, just amazing energy about her. And, uh, and, and, and she's just been working, you know, putting out music and, uh, you know, over the pandemic. And she was just awesome enough to kind of ask me to, you know, see if I wanted to kind of be a, you know, do a song together. And I was like, absolutely, this is going to be cool. And um, we just put it together and, uh, and it's, it's finally coming out. So I'm excited. Yeah, it's, it's, it's interesting. Let me ask you, doing collaborations, and these are certainly not your first. Oh, hi, Chad. Hi, sorry, my Zoom had to update. Hey, buddy. <laughs> Good to see you. <laughs> It, it, does it help you uh, doing what you do as a solo performer to kind of do these collaborations that are away from breaking um, or because some artists can get stuck in a tunnel vision and like I only have my own vision and, and I don't want to be part of someone else's or to, how do you feel about such things like that or is it just like your idea of like hey I'm going to do what I can while I can yeah I mean I, I think it's a, a little bit of both you know I, I don't I don't want to ever limit myself with with anything um, and I mean, plus it's, it's just, it's fun, 
it's, you know, uh, it really comes down to that. It's, it's fun to, you know, bounce off ideas, you know, uh, off different people that you've never worked with before and you never know what's going to, going to come out of it. Um, and so, you know, and I mean, at the, at the, at the core of, of where I am, I, I love writing music. I, I mean, I, I'm a songwriter and I really just, I love that part of it. You know, we, we all love the shows. We all love the feeling from playing live, but there's just something cool. It's a cool feeling when you just come together and create something from absolutely nothing. And, uh, and, and to be able to collaborate with someone to create something. Um, it's just cool. It's a cool feeling and it's a cool little teamwork vibe. And, uh, you know, you can kind of both be proud of it and put it out there to the little, the little child. It's our little child. Let's, let's throw it out to the world. <laughs> I, I think what you said is fascinating. I think the word here is songwriter. Um, songwriting, you know, we always think of songwriting like, you know, I think of someone like coming up with Burke Bacharach. I think of a songwriter like he could write for everyone. And it's like, you know, it's like even modern rockers. I mean, Chad Kroger writes for Celine Dion for crying out loud. Yeah. Uh, so it's Chad it's, Kroger is Celine Dion. I don't know if he knew this or not, but he's just been they're wearing all kind of those Canadians skin. bringing They're all one and the same, aren't they? Um, no, but I think it's fascinating, and I and you're right. I think it's it's appropriate to want to collaborate with others to kind of help expand your palette. And it's that thing that's within you. It's like I want to write this song, but it has nothing to do with what people what people know me for. Just because mm -hmm. I need to do this thing. Oh yeah, and plus, you know, everybody's got their own kind of way of doing things. You know, um, I, I always want to learn. I always want to be able to, you know, be a sponge and learn something new from someone. You know, um, yeah. So. Well, uh, guys, we're talking to Keith Whalen from, uh, you know, him from Breaking Benjamin, and he's out on the solo trek right now with the band Red, and they're doing uh, England uh, and uh, the EU. And uh, Chad just showed up. Chad was uh, dealing with some technological glitches. And guys, remind you, if there's any technological glitch tonight, it's because, well, Keith's uh, in a whole other part of the planet. So we're going to we're going to work within the, those uh, parameters. Chad, how are you? Do you have some do you have some conversation for the with our buddy here? I do. Uh, so I didn't realize it was today that your your tour was starting, right? Today's day one. Yeah. Are you, is we're six hours? You're six hours ahead of us, right? Or four hours? Something like that. I've been I've been asking uh, Jerome, <laughs> like where, you, <laughs> about, where are we in time in time zones? Uh, I think I've heard five hours, six hours. I don't know. Have you performed but, uh, performed already then? Yeah. Yeah, performed okay. earlier. Um, yeah, Red's performed. We're we're just it's kind of the process of loading out. But um, yeah, well, man, you're yeah. you're a kind man for giving us your your uh, your time after your first day of tour uh, oh, no. in Europe. No less, so. Oh no, I appreciate you guys having me. No, this is awesome. I mean, yeah, think man. about it. You, you could have gotten off stage and had a bowl of haggis and gone to bed. Yeah. Ooh. I could have. Oh man. There's always tomorrow that. though. You know, we won't bother you. So, exactly. Haggis is on the, on the docket. I had, a, I had a question and I'm not sure if, uh, because of my, my tardiness, uh, I mean, I do apologize. I don't know if you've already discussed this. It sounds like you might've been on the nose here, but I do want to ask, where did you learn to sing? And, and I, I mean this with like the most res respect possible. I was shocked as a human, like hearing your voice on record as Keith, you know, and not uh, the guy who sings very incredible supporting vocals live. And that's the first time I really heard you shine your voice. I, it, this just happened to me like two years ago, maybe I finally heard it. And it seems like there, there may or may not be like a little bit of um, actual like vocal schooling that went on, but I, I just wanted to, to pose that question. Yeah. Well, first off, uh, thank you. Thank you so much. Incredible I appreciate voice. that. That's super kind. Um, yeah, I just, um, I, I think my, uh, my, my, my father was a, a singer and, um, you know, I, I don't, I don't really, um, I didn't really start way back then, uh, in the old days. Um, I think it was one of those things where, uh, I started with guitar and I, and I never really kind of, you know, thought about singing so much other than just, oh, I learned this song and I'm like, oh, it'd be cool if I can learn how to sing the song too and then learn how to play and sing at the same time and then that whole thing. Um, and then of course the songwriting and I realized I didn't really want to really try and be a shredder and really, I don't know, I always wanted to like write songs and 
and, and eventually that kind of transitioned to really trying to work on my singing and all that stuff. So um, I had a few lessons in, in uh, college. Uh, there was this, there was this girl, um, her name was Caroline and she was an opera singer. And uh, she, you know, just kind of taught me a few things about just like breathing and, uh, you know, kind of warm up and stuff like that. But really, it's just it's I think I just kind of took that and just went with it and and put myself out there and just sang and sang and sang. And, um, you know, plus you learn stuff from the artists that you love. You know, you listen to, uh, you know, how Ozzy sings and you listen to how James Hatfield sings and you know, if you've ever, you know, we've, we've all played a cover song and you want to imitate them, you know, you want to nail that, you know, James Hatfield growl and whatever, you know. Um, so I think you kind of, you kind of just kind of pick up and uh, adopt little things here and there and, and eventually kind of find your own thing. Um, so, yeah, I don't know. That's basically how I learned. Uh, so if I could, if I could ask you one more question and I, you might not know who this band is, but do you know who the band Love Drug is? I do not. Okay. Uh, I don't know why, but immediately I, I was listening to your l latest album in Secession today. I'll, and uh, the first thing I thought of was with the piano and the transitions and the song, the way that the sequences, it's like, I wonder if this dude knows Love Drug. And there's this really, it just, uh, you should check it out. I'll send you a link to the actual okay. uh, record I'm referring to, but it's like, uh, it, it, it felt very it was one of my favorite records, so it felt very in line with that. Well, Keith, wow, that's awesome. Keithy, Keith, you're also in possession of a, just a beautiful mid-range tone that is re instantly recognizable to people. Maybe not recognizing it's your voice, but just recognizable t as far as like how it hits the ear. <coughs> so it's easily digestible to where people can actually enjoy the song now, and they're not wrestling with the highs and the lows and the growls and stuff like that. So. That adds to it because then it gives us a timeless look, a timeless feel. It's like going back and listening to the old, like your former tour mates, Allison Chains, and listening to the way Lane hits some of those songs, where it's just that kind of that mid area where you could just really let this kind of soak into the song. And it was Bob funny because I was, sure, man. And listen, I was funny. I was talking to my girlfriend today, and we were talking about Sammy Hagar, and we just listened to yeah. some of his mid 80s records. Yeah. And we're like, why isn't music like this made anymore? Where it's just this cool, harder rock, but with like a big melodic source to it. And and I started thinking about like Brad Delt from Boston and those kind of guys. And I, and I was then I was going back and listening to your stuff today. I was going, this kind of is that for the modern time. You That's know, awesome. It, it's just that kind of like it's super and I in a, in a it's super reliable because you know if I cue this up, I know I'm going to listen to the whole thing and I'm going to enjoy it. And before I know it. I've listened to an hour straight of it. And so that's where like, I think where Chad is talking about your voice is it's so easily digestible, but in such a, a way to where you feel like, man, you're really hearing something special there. So, and I'm not blowing smoke. I just, with singers, that 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 mid range is something that we sometimes forego because everyone, want, everyone wants to make an impact either high or low. Yeah. Yeah, uh, I definitely, you know, I mean, I don't know what to say. That's, thank you. That's, uh, that's an amazing, amazing compliment. Uh, I, uh, I love all those bands. I mean, I love Van Halen. I love Boston. I love Journey. I love, uh, you know, Genesis, Phil Collins, all the 80s stuff, you know, Peter Gabriel, Tears for Fears, all that stuff. Yeah. Um, um, that's, that's really cool. Yeah, I, I, I don't know. I don't really think about it, you know. It's funny you say the word mid, um to me i feel like i'm especially like after tonight's show like my voice is just like oh my god i feel like i sang pretty high tonight but maybe it's not i, I know there's ways singers that can really just belt it out maybe, you know do you, do you uh, feel like you're like having to stretch a little because you're like i just got done doing a tour and i just flew and i'm a little <laughs> jet lagged and i'm really you know when we stretch when we stretch oh, we yeah. kind of when we're reaching for something we're like got to give it a little extra <laughs> sometimes it oh yeah creeps up but it's Definitely. funny you mentioned we all do cover songs. Well, in yeah. 2014, you did Wicked Game from Chris Isaac, who only knows highs and lows. Yeah. But you turned that song into something that was, you know, you could wrestle with and, and work with. So it was just funny to think of, like, when we talk about cover songs we all do, or we all think about it, like, you tackled one that is, A, very well known, B, is in a weird register, uh, 
but it's it's also it's an incredible song but uh, kudos to you for tackling that one and doing it very well and making it somewhat original and wow, adam that you. shallow that I, that was all like doing that at that cover the lady gaga uh g- g- dude insane you sound so great it's, it's a great song like it's it, you know between chris isaac and lady gaga that's some it's some pretty uh veritable forest that you you're swinging that long dick in man very cool <laughs> you guys uh, you, you guys are awesome i'm like i need to call <laughs> you guys whenever i'm like in my just feeling down i'm like yeah. we're, you guys we're life are really coaches a side hustle life coach seriously thank you guys thank y'all uh the, you know what you guys enough people you got to give kudos to people, man. You're in the, you're in the, you're in the marketplace. You're in the public forum. You know, there's, we're so easy to tear people down. It's like where, where people are worth building up, you build them up because they're worthy of those kudos. And I don't think either one of us are saying this because, well, you're our guest tonight. It's like, I, we genuinely <laughs> feel that you're yeah. a, a incredible songwriter, guitar player. Uh-huh. You play well with Thank others. You. And um, again, in your voice, like I can just, Put it on and six hours later i'm not i'm not over it and i'm not poor with it i don't have to hit skip <laughs> i love it's, that it's, it's some wow. comforting that's amazing yeah i mean we're you know we're all our our our, our own worst critic i mean uh mm-hmm. especially me myself when i when i'm you know thinking about uh you know singing and songwriting and stuff i i i really try and um try to be the best i can be and try to get better and try to just keep learning and um, I, I feel so very grateful to just be able to have a career. And, um, and so, yeah, I just, just work hard and enjoy it the most, like the best I can. Yeah. I was going to bring us to, I'm, I'll let you go, Justin, because depending on where you're going, I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to take back some of that and put us in an uncomfortable situation for a second. So where were you going before I take us into no man plan? I was just going to ask uh, Keith at what age, did he decide make that leap and say, I'm going to be a professional musician. This is what I'm going to do. There's no safety. Ooh, I love net. that question. There's no I safety love that here. Question. Yeah. I'm not going to go back to my nine to five and do weekend gigs at Rusty's billiards and God bless those that do it. And yeah. I'm all about people being musicians and following their muse. However, but Absolutely. when you say I'm taking the wheels off and I'm going to ride this fucking bike, that's that was a question i was gonna ask now we can come back to that or, or keith can just answer it right now and then we can go to your thing chad whatever you want you to should play. you should answer that okay so i started playing guitar when i was 15 i think i uh i kind of put it down i was like man this is hard you know the initial attempt to to play instruments i feel for a lot of people they're kind of like man this is hard i'm out you know you got to really force yourself to do it. You know, your fingers hurt. You're like, my hand's not big enough. You know, there's all the excuses and things. Um, but, you know, I, I ended up picking it back up and I was like, I want to do this. I really want to stay with this and, and uh, you know, learn how to do it. Um, I, I'd say probably when I was 17 is when I really thought to myself, man, wouldn't it be awesome to be able to just play music and to get paid? And to be able to, you know, do this and, uh, you know, afford to buy a burrito when you're hungry, you know, so, uh, and so I just, I don't know, I, I kind of, I kind of threw that out to my, to my parents and I was like, I think I really want to do this. And, and, and my parents, they were pretty smart about it. They're, you know, they, they didn't overreact and be like, oh my God, no, you know, they, they were very supportive. You know, they were, you know, my dad was a singer. My mom you know, kind of worked with she was a dancer and a dance troupe traveling kind of thing. So they were kind of in the entertainment industry. So they, they got it uh, and they were super supportive, but they said, the only thing we ask is that you go to college and get a degree and then, you know, you can do whatever you want, you know, we'll support you whatever you want. So I felt like that was a pretty uh, easy kind of compromise there. So, so I did, I went to school, went to university of Tennessee, got a degree in English and, the whole time, the whole time I'm sitting there meeting with, you know, professors and stuff and telling them, I'm like, I want to rock, dude. <laughs> I'm like, I just want to see, just give me a C. Of course, they didn't just give me a C. They're like, no, you know, you need to really like, you know, take this seriously and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. So I did, but I was looking, I was looking forward the whole time. I'm like, I want to be in a band. I want to make music. I want to sing on all right songs. And so, yeah. 
So you're a volunteer who majored in English. What actually serves you well as a songwriter? I think so, you know, um, maybe some in some subtle way, uh, even unconsciously. Surely some of those poetry classes and, uh, you know. Word play, yeah. Yeah, you know, all the, all the reading, all the papers I had to write. It was nothing but writing papers if you're an English major. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. and I was terrible at math. So I, I figured, all right, I'm going to just, I'm going to go with the, with the words. <laughs> Let me ask you within your curriculum in the English major, was there any time you had to take a course in romance languages? Um, I had, I had history of the English language, nothing, nothing about the romance languages. I was just always curious. Cause that's where we always end up going at the end of the day, all music's about boy, girl. And, uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah most of it a lot of it yeah very true uh, so, so i'm always like well romance language would probably be a good course to go along with creative writing yeah for sure so, yeah it was, a lot of, uh, it, was, it was alfred lord tennyson a little bit oh, of that yeah, absolutely there you go yeah you're writing now you're writing with a you know uh, ink and quill <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> hey uh, chad now you're gonna put us on uncomfortable spot which one is i don't that? know if it's uncomfortable as much as like uh i wanted to bring bring keith back and take us to 2013 before 2014 when you were in a very i would assume i don't really know how your previous act that you were part of you parted ways if it was because of the opportunity that was ahead of you but were you in a position in that space where because your record your ep comes out in 2014 you take the gig uh with breaking benjamin massive opportunity in 2014 and at that same time you're at a, like a crossroads i would imagine like do i i'm putting out the record on my own my name is keith wallen or mm -hmm. do i become you know the guitar player in this band and put this on hold and and how did that feel so i just kind of wanted to bring you there and if you could walk us through it i think people would be very interested to to hear about your yeah. moment there uh, yeah that's an interesting uh mm -hmm topic uh, interesting uh time in my life for sure um i've had the i've had a few of those crossroads moments like that where it was you know i had, I had a band in knoxville called copper uh, for eight years and, and and same kind of thing it just kind of came to an end and and i'm just like what the hell am i gonna do you know um i knew i wanted to play music and uh you know the adelita's way uh, opportunity came up. So I did that. And the same kind of thing at, 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 at the end of that, I just, I kind of felt like I was just, I don't know. I just didn't feel like I was where I wanted to be. And I just didn't feel, um, happy. You know, I felt like I needed to break away and just try something, try anything. And, um, but yeah, there, there was, there was, there was definitely some moments where, you know, um, you really got to search your soul and be like, do I really, want to do this or do I want to try and get a job and try to you know have a different career and make money and basically just give up on your dream it's a, it's a really hard hard kind of thing you're to you know you're faced with at the time uh at least I was I really had a hard time with it um but I you know I knew I, I loved music and I knew I wanted to keep going and so I just started writing some of those songs for on the allies EP and um, when I left Adelita's Way, there was nothing. There was no opportunity. It wasn't like, you know, Ben called me and said, hey, you know, it's not, not like anybody stole me away or anything. Uh, it was just kind of like, um, you know, I was just kind of like out on my own, floating around the, the universe with my EP and just working kind of a, a job there. I was living in L.A. at the time. I was working at a grocery delivery place called Yummy. And uh, it sucked. It was the most soul sucked. <laughs> Shit I've ever done in my fucking life, yeah. and and I'll never forget it uh, because you know I would I would deliver groceries to all these, you know, amazing homes and just people were just they looked so miserable. They were, they'd open the door, they'd be like, "Cool, bang," you know, just just so miserable. And I just was like, "This is awful." Whatever I can do to quit this job as fast as possible, I will do it. You know, so. Uh, so I put out the EP. I started just kind of writing songs and um, working with a, a few, you know, little some some different musicians around LA a little bit. Uh, and then, um, I mean, actually, even before that, right when I had quit, I wrote this kind of, you know, thank you 
note on Facebook and just kind of resignation kind of thing. Uh, I, I called it my, my, my manifesto, my quit manifesto. Um, you know, just kind of, hey, thank you guys so much. Thanks, you know, to out of this way, everything, uh, and posted it. And, and I guess Ben saw it online and, and he hit me up uh, through his wife, um, her Facebook. And I was like, who's this? And I was like, hey, this is Ben from Breaking Benjamin. He's just like, hey, bud, you know, uh, I'm kind of looking at trying to find some new musicians for my band. You know, are you interested? And I was just like, holy shit, that'd be awesome. And I'm, I've always been a Breaking Benjamin fan too, you know. Mm -hmm. Both of my bands that I, I was in before joining Breaking Ben played with Breaking Ben and opened for him. So it's, it's weird. There's a, speaking of, there's a picture of me uh, from years ago and I'm playing at a radio station, uh, like a live interview kind of thing. And behind me, there's a flyer and it's just like Breaking Benjamin and stuff. And I'm just like, wow, that's crazy. Uh, but anyway. That's fucking awesome. Yeah, so it's, it's weird, like coming across stuff like that. But like I said, I was always a fan of the band and and um, and it was just super cool. It, I thought it was a cool opportunity and I liked the music. And um, he was like, yes, you know, make some videos, send me some videos of of uh of your playing and and you know here's here's three of the songs you know learn these and send a video so and they were looking for a lead guitarist and i'm more of a rhythm guy i've never been mm -hmm. a lead guy so i told him i was like i mean i'll try to learn the leads and stuff but I'm, I'm a rhythm dude you know um so yeah i sent him the videos he was like this is great you know i'll, I'll, I'll keep this around i never did really hear anything uh for a while so i just figured ah dang it i didn't get it i didn't get the job or whatever uh, and then Jason Rao hit me up, um, who actually used to be in red. Uh, he, uh, he hit me up and he was just like, yo, would you ever consider joining another band? And I'm just like, well, you know, depends on who it is. And he was like, well, it's breaking Benjamin. And I was just like, holy shit. I was like, dude, I just talked to Ben and you know, he, I, I kind of felt like I, I didn't make the cut or whatever. He was just like, no, no. So I'm playing lead and he needs, he wants another rhythm guitar player and to, who can sing vocals, you know, and I think he, you know, he really liked your voice. Like he remembered me from Adelita's way opening for him somehow. I don't know, which was crazy to me. I, I didn't even remember meeting him. Um, yeah. So, but, uh, but yeah, so that led to, you know, the auditions and things. And, and then, um, you know, then we, we had Breaking Benjamin boot camp where, we, we basically rehearsed, rehearsed, rehearsed for, I don't know, three, four months before, um, you know, our first show. Because, you know, we had this thing where it's like, well, you know, we're all singers. You know, Aaron sings, I sing, Ben's, you know, uh, yeah. killing it for years, you know. And he was just like, I want some help. I really need some help. I want to be able to, you know, do these long tours and not blow my voice out. And, and uh, so we all basically had to kind of learn the lead parts, the harmony parts, if somebody's harmony part, if they, you know, if I don't know, for whatever reason, they couldn't do it, I needed to sing that harmony part and then vice versa. So it was, it's really, it was really a lot. So we had to learn a lot of every little thing, uh, yeah. but it was fun. It was, it was a blast. And, and eventually, you know, um, we came out of the, uh, <laughs> the cave uh, and uh, started playing songs. And, uh, right. and started hitting the, hitting the touring hard. So two two things I think I think it's interesting for people to realize the amount of work that's almost in a sportsman's like a sport like a, a team sport game where it's like you have practices you have drills this is how we're gonna do this you know it yeah. may not be the tackling sled but you know you're having to go over who's handling vocals here who's doing this and it's yeah. not like hey man let's grab a couple of beers and jam yeah. <laughs> no not at yeah. this level. And no. I also find it ironic that working for Yummy is what made you hungry to do music again. Anyway. Boy, it sure did. God. I'm here all week, was... folks. <laughs> oh, yeah. No, that's, that's good. Uh, I can't even hear that without just cringing. I can't even hear Yummy without coming out cringing. Uh, I, I can't believe you guys, ha like, I mean, I can believe it, but like, that's like Motown. You know, that's like some four top shit where you're like, all right, well, one of you guys yeah. go down. The other person has to know, you know, this this harmony, this lead or whatever it is, um, you know, and that that goes for the whole, you know, that goes for all four of you, the four, you know. So at, at, has that happened? Have you been in an uncomfortable situation where you're like, 
fuck are you serious you know like uh, the whole tour and all of a sudden you know jason comes out and always like you can't sing tonight dude you're gonna have to take my parts you know especially in these songs yeah in that song. yeah absolutely oh, there's been times where you know somebody's been sick and we gotta kind of cover the weight and um you know but and it's happened to me there's been times mm-hmm. where I've, I've just not had a voice and, and, you know, Aaron covered for me. Um, yeah, it's, um, yeah, we, and we do it, you know, we don't have, we don't have any tracks, um, no tracks at all. You know, we have a couple of little triggers, a couple of little sound effects that are triggered by, you know, tr- you know, Sean hitting something, but, um, yeah, it's, um, it's tough (laughs) here with my, with my stuff. I've got, I've got some tracks going, but it's, you know, it's like, it's all the little sound effects things that, um, you know, a a, a keyboard player would do, but I just, I don't, I don't have a keyboard player yet. So just like, ah, let's just put it in there. You play keys, uh, right? Like like those, those piano parts on the record. Is that you? Yeah. But I mean, it's just so rudimentary. I'm, I'm just kind of like, you know, I'll be like, bling, bling, bling. Okay, stop. <laughs> Next part, bling, bling, bling. <laughs> nothing, That's nothing to. Still, yeah. I mean, that, 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 the ability to do that and understand where you're going on a keyboard helps with your vocal. Um, I think monumentally in those processes, especially when you have to think about, fuck, what was his key? What, what is it? Where are we at again? Okay, this key's in the third. Okay, I'll make sure that I just you know, I understand that drop or whatever it is. I don't even know any of that. I, I couldn't tell you any theory or anything like that. I'm just, yeah, I, I guess oh. I should probably know a little more about that, but I, I just don't. Me either. <laughs> it, it, it ain't broken. Don't that. fix it. It's, it it's, yeah. it's not broken, dude. Um, so yeah, the vocal harmonies are funny because I think Breaking Ben covers the pet, pet sounds. That's going to be your next cover album. The albums just, you guys are just going to recreate pet sounds. Yeah, there we go. That'd be uh, that'd be ambitious to say the least. <laughs> right. Four or five part harmonies. Whew. Shoot. Yeah. So yeah. Let me well, ask you when when you're writing and you're writing for yourself, or do you when you write, do you write say, hey, this song is going to be a breaking men song, or I might just squirrel this away for my next record, or basically, <coughs> is there just sometimes because there's stuff that's very similar between you? Sometimes it's hard to escape what your day job might be. Sure. Um, and it becomes, you know, your sound on your solo records. Is there times though, when you're just like, Hey, I'm writing this specifically for me, or is, is someone like Ben or someone here and go, mm, I think, well, let's do that one. You there? Yeah, we're here. There you go. Sorry. I dropped you for a second. Did you hear what I <clears throat> the question? Uh, it says, it says your internet connection is unstable, but we'll, we'll see what we got. Okay. Uh, yeah. The question was, how do I differentiate between writing for myself or breaking Benjamin? Correct. Um, yeah, I mean, we got a different, a different kind of thing, you know, um, it's interesting when I'm, when I'm in breaking Benjamin mode, you know, I, I definitely have a mode and I'm like, all right, this is for breaking Benjamin. I'm going to try to write something for that, you know, um, and similarly, you know, similarly for, for myself, you know, I, I, I think, I think I just, my stuff just sounds a little different and, um, I don't know. It's a, it's kind of a different sound. I think, um, your stuff is it's, I, if, if someone was to say, I think a first list, first listen and go, wow, similar, yours has a very ethereal sound to it. I mean, just, sure. I, yeah. I'll take that. <laughs> well, yeah. well, I mean, you, you, you definitely come from a world of, and I'm going to ask you this. I mean, you're talking about influences. I mean, big kind of atmospheric melodic rock. That's kind of like your thing. Sure. I love that. Yeah. Um, was it, was that like one of the things, I mean, some people will go, yeah, I grew up listening to melancholy for five years. So that's where I kind of created this sound or this, what, you know, took hold of me. What, what was the first record you ever bought with your money, your own money? Uh, probably metallica master of puppets and then i I, then i bought led zeppelin Uh four and then i bought uh stone Temple pilots purple and then i bought alice in chains dirt um which is basically the yeah you just the blueprints of everything really you just kind of bought the cornerstones of modern rock since 1985 I'm like yeah. sir makes a lot well, actually well, actually hold on 71 because Led zeppelin 4 came out in 71 sorry yeah missed that one <laughs> gosh and that and that was another thing just uh being out with alice this last couple months it was mm-hmm. just 
every day was just another mind blowing thing, you know. Yeah. I, I, John, like, kind of tap you on the shoulder, and you just turn around, and it, I was just like, God, did anybody see that? He, he said, hey to me, did you, did you see that? It's like, so like the whole floor was just that. Uh, but it was just so, it was so surreal. I mean, cause he's such a guitar hero and he's such a hero of mine and so many other mm -hmm. people uh, to be just that close and hanging out and just watching them every night. And for him to be so cool, he's so cool. Like, like coolest of the cool. Like I was just, it was awesome. It was, you know, they always say, you know, don't meet your heroes. Um, it was just not the case uh, with, with, with any of those guys. Uh, they were awesome. And same with Bush. All those guys were great. It was just a great tour. I mean, um, well, super amazing. Probably my favorite tour I've ever been on. Did you ever well, kick his ass at golf? That's what I was going to well, get to. You know, like you're running, you, you really made it when you're playing golf with your heroes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that, was, uh, that was a crazy thing. Um, yeah. So the very first venue uh, is right outside of Pittsburgh. I can't remember uh, what the venue's called, but Chad, you've probably played there, but yeah. there's a pond back there with a little <laughs> island yeah. and you hit golf balls and you try to hit the island. Um, yeah, it's just kind of, you know, they have it set up for musicians to just kind of blow off some steam there. So uh, the very first day, Jerry um, and, and Mike were out there hitting golf balls and I'm like, I'm just going to, I'm just going to walk over there and introduce myself. And, you know, I was like, I play golf. I was like, you know, let's do this. So I walked over and I was just like, I was like, Jerry, I was like, Hey man, I'm, I'm Keith Wallen. Uh, I play with Breaking Ben, man. I'm so, so happy and stoked to be on this tour with you guys. It's such an honor. And, and he just handed me a golf club and I'm like, uh, okay, I guess it's my turn. And <laughs> so we, you know, started kind of hitting the balls out there and um, eventually everybody there was like a bunch of people kind of gathered and uh you know they they had a media guy that was there kind of filming and no one hit was hitting the island and for some reason the, the camera guy put the camera on me and everybody's watching i hit it and i hit the island and everyone's like oh man like jerry gave me a high five i was just like this is the greatest day of my life yeah yep. like <laughs> what like such pressure and and like to just to do that it was it was sweet um so then two shows later uh, their, their PA came up to me and found me in the hall and was just like, Hey, are you Keith? And I'm like, yeah. He was like, uh, Jerry wants to know if you want to play golf on the next day off. And I was like, yeah. And then I was like, wait, he knows my name. <laughs> she was like, yeah, he knows your name. Yeah. And so it was just uh, in incredible. It was, it was amazing. I, and she gave me a post-it note. It was just like, you know, meet in the lobby, blah, blah, blah. I still, I, I'm, I'm keeping the post-it note, you know? uh but it, it was it was so cool and just that whole day out there playing golf it was it was me jerry um uh miguel who was kind of a personal trainer out there help helping them out and uh and Corey from bush and it was awesome it was just amazing i played like shit uh but i mean it was amazing um yeah yeah you know yeah you Jerry's know good. he's a billion right yeah Here's the deal. You know why? Yeah. You know why he remembered your name? Because on that tour, anyone could play guitar. But who's sticking an eight iron across a water hazard? He's remembering <laughs> that guy. Sure. That had to help. That had to help a little bit. I'm like, all right, cool. Because you know what? I, I'm sure you guys, when you're out there, sometimes when you're day out, the last thing you want to think about is playing. You just want to go out and and, and go out and chase your hobbies and oh yeah, and like you said, get away. The complete opposite of what we do for a living. Absolutely, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Dude, I'll never forget it. I'll, I'll never forget it. It was like, it was an unbelievable experience that, uh, you know, I'll treasure forever. Sure. Um, so, yeah, I don't know how to top it, honestly. That's great. You do it again in 23. <laughs> yeah, there you go. Yeah. <laughs> sure. So, speaking of going forward, so you got this tour, it's going to run you until the first week of November, I believe. And then what, are you going to just basically take the holidays off and then, and then, join us in january that'll be your first gig after that yeah as far as playing uh performing live yeah i'm gonna take that time off but uh, as soon as i get home it's just gonna be writing 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 for uh uh my 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 next solo album and also um for new breaking band uh so we're just it's gonna be it's gonna be busy but in a different way Interesting. that's great so when you when you're writing, let me ask you this question because I, I when I came in, you guys were talking about co-writing and 
and how I, I believe at least and how uh coexisting with these people in a room who are you know may or may not be like somebody like uh jerry you know like when you're when you're when you're brought to the table like that, not just like you're a hired gun to play guitar, you know, in a touring band like Breaking Benjamin, but you're part of the band. How does that, how does that, first of all, how does it feel when you first started doing it? And to this day now, you know, somewhat eight years later, has it changed? Has your feeling changed from that? Do you feel more confident in that sort of thing? I definitely feel more confident. Uh, but honestly, from the very get-go, um, it didn't feel like, uh, you know, I was just kind of like a, a, a an odd man out, you know, Ben absolutely made us feel so welcome from the very first time we all hung out. And, and uh, even, even as early as that was, uh, you know, they, we had, you know, Dark Before Dawn uh, that was, you know, that released soon after we kind of reformed, but a lot of those songs were written, but there was a, there was a few ideas that hadn't been finished and and you know ben absolutely invited us to you know throw our two cents in and the right and come up with stuff and, and i was just like man you know we've been in this band five minutes and he's already wanting us to write i'm like that's a good sign i'm like that's really really cool and i think it's just a kind of a testament to ben you know he's just really had uh uh faith in us that that we were the right people for the job so so it was cool i mean and even uh, other than him you know the the fans were absolutely welcoming with open arms and i think uh i think really that they were just happy that breaking benjamin was back you know uh and we were just fortunate enough to be a part of it um but yeah it, it really just hasn't changed to me you know we were we were really just we were talking about that just the other day on on stage we did something we had like a, a little i don't know or no it was like a, a vip thing and ben was just like we've been doing this for eight years. Like we've, and, and it doesn't seem like that. Like, I feel like I, I just started playing with Breaking Band like yesterday, but it's been eight years, almost a decade. And uh, it's crazy to me. Um, so I think that's just a testament to us having fun and, you know, just enjoying it, you know, time flies. So. Yeah, man. Well, one of the things that makes it seem that way is that you guys are, it always seems that you always seem to be on the road. There's always some activity in the breaking Ben camp. So this doesn't ever seem like, you know, your tool where you're gone for 10 years and then you reappear. You guys always seem to kind of be there. And it's again, one of those things that it's almost reliability. Uh, yeah. I mean, we do, we love performing. We love to play shows. I mean, we love, we love our fans tremendously. I mean, without them, it's, it's for nothing, you know? So mm -hmm um it's always a, a joy and an honor to get out there and perform for them yeah yeah but that's one of the things is like it's like when we're at work we're tolling away you're like working and you're really busy then you realize about 15 hours went by really quick <laughs> yeah and but if you're sitting there going geez man you know you're watching clock watching you're watching the kettle boil that's that's the worst yeah so, i mean yeah. Tour, touring in general is in a way, it is kind of like a time warp in a way, you know, you just, you know, you kind of start getting in the groove and before you know it, it's like a week's come by, two weeks and, and uh, yeah, and then you're just yeah. like, oh my gosh, I've been, I've been away for three months. Who am I? What day is it? <laughs> you know, you kind of just lose track of life for a little bit yeah. there. Who didn't mow the lawn? Yeah. That kind of stuff. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Yeah, for sure. For sure. So, Hey, we want to do this thing with you called walk the plank where we just kind of ask you a couple of questions and they're just, just it usually does nothing to do with music. It's just okay. random bullshit bar talk. All right. So, uh, Chad, Chad will go first since he was late to the party. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So if you can uninvent, uninvent one thing, what would it be? Oh, Ooh, gosh, um, that's tough. <laughs> uninvent, uninvent. You know, it's, I'm trying to think of that thing that's just like everybody, that's a, it's a blessing to everybody, but it turns into a curse over time. I mean, um, I don't know. I don't know. That's a tough one. I keep the inner, the word internet keeps coming in my brain. Go. Yeah. But the internet has been so beneficial in so many ways, connecting the world, connecting so many things, information, but obviously yeah. 
it's done a lot of bad in terms of like mental health and all kinds of stuff, you know? So, um, but I don't know if I would uninvent it because I feel like there's more positive than negative. So I don't know. That's, you know, the thing without it though, you still would have bought Led Zeppelin four. Yeah. <laughs> That's true. That is true. Uh, without it, there'd probably be more album sales. <laughs> Physical. Uh, Those are back in vogue. Vinyl is yeah, back in vogue. That, that's that's the self. That's the musician. The musician with the selfish uh, thought there, thinking about you. Do you, you guys put vinyl? Out. You put vinyl out, right? You guys put vinyl out of your stuff now, right? We okay. do. We do. Yeah, okay. and uh, I, I did for the solo stuff as well. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Which took forever, by the way. Yeah. Apparently, uh, getting vinyls made there's a there's a like long delay. Plant, yeah, there's one in plant or something. Right it's I know it's just like, <laughs> wait, surely this takes doesn't take this long, but apparently it does. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, and, my question and is, this last and, year was the first time that vinyl had eclipsed in physical sales any other medium. In, that's in crazy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Crazy. Oh yeah, like since back in the day. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's yeah. awesome. And also cassettes now are making uh, making their way back into the scene. Everything, you know, everything becomes yeah. retro and it's cool again. But you know what? The truth of the matter is it just sounds fucking better. It does. Nice, That's warm cool. sound. Yeah. Yeah. It's all cyclical. Um, where's my Where's my journey tape? <laughs> Wind that fucker right back up. There we go. You, that, well, all you need is a pencil. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, my question yeah. is this. Uh, who, what's your spirit animal? turtle and the reason why because you want to live to be 108 well i don't know about that uh, but uh i mean it'd be nice to just kind of hide and escape if you wanted to mm. from anything and everything i love that question is my question is what happens if you get flipped on your back <laughs> i mean cowabunga i don't know <laughs> Live long and prosper has been fun. Yeah, hopefully, <laughs> hopefully another turtle will come and flip me over. That's or right. Splinter. You know, it's funny. <laughs> I watched a, a video. Did you guys see this video the other day? Of I was, I think it was a bull that saw a turtle in distress and flipped it over. With its oh, horn. that's amazing. It, it, it's crazy. It's like you, you got, now you go, man. Animals really do have it down. Yeah, that's amazing. Videos like that. Uh, you know, yeah. it's like wow. Yeah. Whoa. Where's yeah <laughs> yeah i've seen i've seen videos of like other turtles helping turtles uh get back you know right side up but that's We're cool together pal cool different animal <laughs> i i got it i got it because we haven't done that. i just realized we haven't done this in, in walk the plank in a while so so for next guests right we're going to ask yeah. them a, a question that you're at you we don't we can't tell you who it is so you're not gonna you don't know it's just gonna be a general question we're not going to tell them who's asking that question until they <coughs> answer it unfortunately okay. we don't have anybody to do that to now because we had a couple of weeks off but i want to ask you what question would you like to ask somebody in this particular situation uh and uh we'll type it down and we'll ask him and i'll let you know what he says on the ship or they say on the ship I mean, I wish I had a good, just cosmic universe question, all I encompassing. Mean, what, so what kind uh, of socks uh, are you wearing? You know? Yeah. <laughs> I, uh, the only thing that comes to mind is, uh, is a joke. It's a joke that I, it's probably, maybe it's been around, but I, I feel like I'm the author of this. I wrote, I wrote a joke. I have one joke uh, and it's probably not that funny, but the question is, if you were beamed up to an alien ship, and they performed all kinds of experiments, let's say, experiments, anal probes and lasers and technology and all kinds of stuff, really horrible stuff. Both and then stuff. Beamed, you, beamed you back down, would you tell anybody? That's the question. Okay. So I'm going to uh, phrase it. So if you were beamed up to an alien ship and you and you were to have experiments performed on you, but stuff, uh, <laughs> when you came when they when they brought you back down to Earth, would you tell anybody? Yeah. <laughs> when they, yeah. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, you guys want to hear the punchline? The punchline is 100%. you have to sell it. You have to kind of sell it and just be kind of shook and just just be just like, I don't know what to do. That's it. That's the punchline. <laughs> anyway yeah so i'm curious I'm, yeah i'd be curious to see what their answer was yeah. I, I, what's funny is that i'll tell that joke to people and 
they, they don't, they don't see it as a joke. They really see it as just that question. Mm-hmm. And nine times out of 10, nine times out of 10, people are like, Oh yeah, I'd tell people, you know? So yeah. Document it. <laughs> yeah. So I got a video camera. I'm going to get in there. Yeah. <laughs> Yo, Discovery channel. Let's do an interview. <laughs> I'm going to be paid for this. Yeah. That guy with the big hair shows up, you know, He's always gonna be, he's <laughs> ancient always aliens. Gonna be. Yeah, exactly. Ancient aliens. That's right. That guy. Yeah. yeah right. That's well, a great Keith, question. That's probably my favorite, by the way. Sweet. Yeah, it's uh it's 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 almost 2 a.m. London time, and we've had you for almost an hour, so we can't appreciate you giving us your time. Uh so uh, again, thank you. Thank you. And uh Best of success Thank on you. this trek with the band Red, and you're going to be in support of uh, this world, world or the next, whilst writing right. songs for your uh, for your next project. Yeah, um, that's right. Yeah, yeah. And we're going to see you though, dude, in, in January. And you're going dude, to be doing I can't a wait. special. Oh, dude, it's going to be amazing. You're going to be doing some stowaway stuff, acoustic special set for us, uh, yeah. which is again one of those really cool things that. You know, artists can sometimes do because it's just a one-off situation. So why not think outside of the box? So that's gonna be a lot of fun for people. And uh, you've obviously you you are, you were on when when were you with the band when they came in and played? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, sure. When, I was when, there when, and you were there when Breaking <laughs> Band played uh, yeah. last. You were you were with you had joined him at that point, right? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, great. Just making sure, yeah. just clarifying for my yeah. own records. So yeah, uh, I think that was twenty seventeen. I believe. Twice. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> so very good. Very good. Well, yeah. listen, bud. Thank you again. Um, Chad, thanks, buddy. Appreciate it, man. Well, thank you guys. Sorry about being late. And Happy to see you. Yeah. Listen, um, real quick before we head out here, I just want to say thank you to our show producer, Al McManus, our show engineer, Jenner Vizito, our show coordinator, Heather Smith, and the captain himself, Alan Koenig. Thank you, everyone. Awesome. Uh, Keith, again, thanks, buddy. We appreciate your time and we'll see you. Uh, we'll see you in the beginning of the new year. Thank you guys so much. It's been an absolute pleasure and I uh, can't wait to see you in January. Right, and thanks bro. to I'll everybody. Yeah. yeah. Thanks, man. Take care. See ya.